Hello my brothers and my sisters, welcome back to the order, I am Celtic Templar and for this video on review uh, we are actually going to be looking at, well, none other than a buckler shield, especially this one. This is <laughs> this is my newest shield, it's a buckler shield from uh, Lords of Battles. It's known as the hand hammered buckler, uh, which I guess it's known at because of its look of it making it look like as though it's hand hammered. Although. I thought this was just pure decoration. It's not uh, hand hammered at all. So yeah, it's made from 16 gauge steel as well as uh, 11 three fourths by 11 three fourths. So in other words, all the way around, it's that type of size. And as well, it weighs around I believe it was two pounds and ten ounces. So we got a good weight to it and a good thickness. Now, as you can see, I have attached it with my falchion sword. Reason being the fact is that the buckler shield was normally used uh, during the medieval period, especially by mercenary units who loved the thing since it was so light. Now many people might start saying that the buckler shield is a shield that was only used in the medieval period. That's actually wrong. In fact, the buckler shield was actually used throughout the ancient periods, especially from the Bronze Age up until the 1700s, and the last time it was used was during the time of not on the uh, battlefields of a plain field or forest but now on ships especially the deck of ships such as used by pirates early pirates maybe and as well also used by pretty much any uh, well, military groups and the thing is the buckler was perfect for this self-defense type of well gear and as you all can see with my movement with it, it's a slight bit easier to uh, work with the form in which I am doing. Now maybe you might start saying, Tumblr, why is it that the fact that the sword is and shields are moving like this? Well, that's how you worked with the buckler. The buckler shield is not a shield like, uh, well, like the heater shield, nor is it like, well, that of the... Uh, kite shield or the scutum or the round shields of the Vikings in which the reason behind this shield is to keep moving in other words it's to deflect the weapon and get in close and kill that's how it was mainly meant to be used as you can see I just put it with my uh, falchion sword like this uh, for the one major reason because that's how they're actually meant to be as you all can also see I even attached a piece of leather or cord onto it so that way it could historically be used that way. In which, that's actually how they were actually uh, meant to be held on. Of which, later came a historical term for them known as swashbuckling. Now, uh, that's actually later on with the pirates form, but in truth, you can see my point on how long the buckler shield was used. Now, the handle is made out of wood, well, mostly a wood. The rest of it is railing made out of the metal, which is attached to the back end of the buckler. Hence it would always make a clanging noise when it's moving around or somewhat. However, it depends on how you would have actually uh, placed the buckler. In fact, sometimes I'm actually told what they did instead of wrapping a cord around the uh, handle of the sword or uh, I should say the handle of the shield they would have actually just placed it on like so without the uh, inducement. In other words, the shield like this would just go over the scabbard of the sword like so. But I don't think that's going to work in this case because it doesn't want to actually uh, want to do that. So that's why I just went with the leather cord. It's slightly easier for me. But yeah, this is perfect also. And the really cool thing is, I can still use this leather cord to hold onto the shield, especially if I lost it. And now, boom, I can easily just, well, recover. Easily movement, that's how it's supposed to be used. In fact, you can even state it to use the shield for bashing into a human skull, especially the edge, or as well the plate. Now, it does imagine this. This thing is actually strong and sturdy enough to actually probably cause major drop form of damage to the human body. In fact, it's actually stated that in during medieval combat, for example, 
say for example I was bashed at someone's arm, here's the thing, I can then convince him to surrender, especially if I grab his arm now, and now his sword's going deep into his throat. However, he's not going to surrender then, so yeah. Now, as you can tell, the falchion and buckler were actually a great mix for these type of weapons, especially for foot soldiers. Foot soldiers love the buckler, especially seen as though they can easily just get in and attack. However, the buckler was also seen with other weapons, such as axes, such as, well, one-handed axes, I should say, maces, and war hammers. Because anything that of which was uh, single-hand use was actually used with it. However, we do see medieval knights actually using bucklers, so it wasn't just uh, foot soldiers that used these shields. However, during the medieval period, anyone can actually get their hands on these. Well, if they had the coin. Now, there are actually also some historical gauntlets I've actually seen actually have this weird design into it with the well, uh, hang on, let me see if I can get my with, uh, say, a gauntlet like this, for example, they would actually have it attached to the knuckle guard of well, the form of knuckles right here. And in which that's by the late medieval standard, but I think I can easily just get my hand in like so, as you can see. Uh, but yeah, pretty much this all, uh, it's kind of like, what's the point? Seeing as though my hand is still technically covered by the gauntlet. Now, though, I'm told, though, the reason they did this was the fact, not for extra protection, but to actually add a factorialization of a weapon. So, just think about that, of how dangerous this would have looked. Especially, uh, I could easily just grab the shield, like so, and bash it with somebody, like so. So, you can see why this was still dangerous enough, as well, effective enough. However, it was technically fixed like this, rather than it being able to move around. So, in other words, the buckler would have stayed, well, put, as you can see. So, I don't know if that would have been a, both a good or a bad thing. But... Yeah, if that was fully attached to the knuckle guard, I would seriously see a big problem. Especially. Uh, but as well, also, with some versions of these, actually, I'm actually even told that what some medieval soldiers did is that they used a small dagger, for example, like the Dagger of Mercy, when they held the weapon. In fact, I can... Let me see if I can actually just get my hand around my own sword, for example. But yeah, they would probably used a baldric or a Scottish, uh, in fact, Scottish warriors, for example, they used the targ shield and dirk combination to actually use this. So you can imagine of how effective that might have been, especially on the medieval battlefield. They could have easily had a, well, a said knife, for example, that sticks outward or downward, in which they could easily stab or they can also cut. So just imagine how effective that would have been on other foot soldiers. So this would have actually been perfect for the medieval battlefield use. Now, uh, I myself do like this. It's light enough. In fact, I can easily just lift and bro, lift and bro. Uh, now, one thing also I do like about this thing is the fact that it's actually effective enough to be used as, say, a secondary type of shield. However, the thing is, you don't want to deflect arrows. <laughs> <laughs> what this thing? Look, in fact, if any of y'all remember the movie Braveheart, I know, bad historical film, but uh, remember the Irishman? Well, here's the thing. This is this type of shield. He's uh, using a buckler to deflect arrows. <laughs> uh, that part I find really stupid because of the fact... Uh, uh, here. <laughs> you see my point? Uh, this is not going to deflect any arrows. Uh, well, maybe on my head. But that's about it, so that's probably the only good place I could probably use it. In fact, to deflect arrows, you might to use a shield. But for close range battles, always go with the buckler. Especially if you got nothing else with it. But still, the buckler shield is probably one of the most effective shields out there. That of which was still being used for such a long time period. From the Bronze Age up until the 1700s. And we can see why these were still being used. These were... Pretty much actually perfect for a secondary weapon and as well a good form of self-defense in the middle of a And just imagine this, using this on someone's face, especially if you punch them. 
especially when there's no helmet. But in fact, by the very late medieval period, for example, there were more slightly opened, uh, open visored helms. And even by the time of the uh, warring periods of the end of the Hundred Years' War, or including if we go to the uh, English Civil War, if none of y'all know what happened in the English Civil War, especially, uh, well, plate armor was still being used, and guess what? This was probably effective enough to stop a saber blow coming at you, especially from a cavalry charge. Here comes a cavalry officer, <laughs> deflect. As soon as he comes in, deflect. That's how it was meant to be used. In fact, you can easily just, in fact, view my hand as the sword. What you can actually do is the following. As soon as he comes in, you force the shield up, deflecting it and pushing it to the side. Meaning, as soon as it's deflected and pushed to the side, you can then come at him with a blow of your own to finish him off. Now, you can see why these things were still being used effectively, so I can pretty much actually properly use this thing for such a long time. Now, here many of you already. Templar, then why were these shields no longer being used? Well, kind of obvious. Uh, firearms were starting to level the playing field. And the fact is, uh, here's the thing. Oh, can you stop a bullet? Uh, oh, uh, uh, uh. No. And here's the thing. Uh, you can stop a bullet, as I explained in my last video. You can actually stop a bullet with plate. But the thing is, uh, can you deflect a bullet and see it? No, you cannot. In fact, bullets are slightly faster than arrows, and in which are hard for the human eye to see properly. Now, you have to need a slow motion camera just to get it correct enough to a speed that you can easily see it. In fact, even arrows are hard to see it when it comes to them coming right at you. So, yeah, you can see my problem with that idea. <laughs> now, when this came to me, it was first extremely oiled, literally. It took me like about a day, like uh, two hours or so just to get the uh, all the oil completely off. So, and and maybe you might start saying, Templar, why would you take all the oil off? Here's the thing, the oil was incredibly all, literally, there's still some of it still, uh, in the reinforcement bar up here. Now, uh, I hear many of you already, Templar, you shouldn't get rid of all the oil. Well, uh, this is only packaging oil, so it's not the oil you need to keep it clean and such all day and such. But, you can see my point, it's, you got to keep it uh, purposely oiled enough to keep the thing proper. However, uh, I do like the fact that it's blackened, but if it's going to be used with medieval combat fighting, you know, for the example, they don't actually blacken their uh, shields. The only reason I bought this one is because I love the fact of how it's this one made, made on one sheet of metal. And in fact, by the very late medieval period, that's what bucklers looked like. They were made out of one sheet of metal, just like that. It was a lot easier. Now, though... Uh, I hear many of you already. Templar, how did the buckler first come to be? Well, for one, they were first used during the Bronze Age, especially for one-on-one -on -one combat. Now, if none of y'all know what one-on-one -on -one combat was back then, it was like a champion versus champion. In other words, one champion from this army, one champion from that army, they use a buckler and they just duke it out. However, it depends on the region. In fact, some Bronze Age cultures had it with... Uh, different design ways of fighting, so sometimes it wasn't even with a buckler. So, uh, we could see how weird that would look, so yeah. But still though, the buckler was effective enough. And in fact, uh, there are some buckler shields that have a weird design strap design on it, none of which they're literally strapped on the arm rather than you holding on to them. However, as you can see, this one is a handed version, so yeah. No, I do like the fact of that being actually a strapped version. In fact, it's actually stated that the Targ shield, the Scottish Targ, might have actually been originally a buckler rather than the massive shield that it was. In fact, it does almost uh, feel like this is a Targ. Uh, almost. Uh, but yeah. But I can actually see myself probably using this buckler shield with my Scottish Dirk dagger, for example, and drawing it out and just killing somebody. But... <laughs> Yeah, ah, it actually kind of hurts a little if you do it. So, yeah. However, this is still effective enough to swash away a person's oncoming weapon. In fact, these are perfect to be used uh, 
especially with war hammers, maces, swords, any type of weapon that's for melee combat. And in fact, even some pole weapons like halberds were used with these, but as I said, I think those would have to be a strapped on model or the knuckle model that was to which attached to you the gauntlet. So, yeah, you see my point. So, how big can a buckler get, you might ask? Uh, that's actually a good question. Uh, this entire buckler, as you can see, it's technically only like around 11 and 3 fourths all the way around. Uh, but from, well, side to side, but you get my point. Uh, but in truth, um, that's a little bit of a hard one to answer because in truth there are many sizes of bucklers out there and there are many designs so it's kind of a 50-50 uh, to this type of size. However, I have heard there are some weird bucklers up to the size of 21 inches so I don't know how the hell that works. Though for me, I wouldn't call that a, tar a, a buckler anymore. I would call that probably a small center grip shield. However, uh, we can see why. Now, though, that's actually a major thing though. As I stated, the buckler was a cheap and effective, uh, well, form of armor. Now, one thing I don't know why is uh, bu this buckler is blackened. I like the look that it's blackened, but if any of y'all know anything from history, uh, bucklers were normally not blackened. In fact, bucklers were Normally, well, like, well, the color is the same as many plate armor like this. Though, Lords of Battles, you did a great job, but, eh, I know, for historical agriculture boots, I had to be a nitpick. Now, though, bucklers were not always made out of, uh, steel. As I said, these would have sometimes been made out of bronze, the originally. However, before that, they would have actually been made out of, uh, I want to say wicker design or something like that. In fact, there are many designs from the ancient periods till we get to bronze, and in which uh, bronze bucklers were very rare to see today. Only a few couple hundred actually still survive. And though they are incredibly beautiful, there are still some really other ones uh, out there, especially by the time in which we see Iron Age. However, by the Iron Age period, especially by the time of the Roman Empire, uh, bucklers were uh, mostly used by Germanic or Celtic warriors, who would have which had the center grip of it uh, made out of, well, iron, and the rest of it made out of wood, in which that design would have still been used throughout the cultures and periods. However, these would only mainly be skirmishing units. And in fact, ancient Celt Iberians, for example, used a falcata and buckler combo because of skirmishing design combat warfare. And which, this is why I love the buckler so much, actually, because they are effective enough to be, well, used on the battlefield. But, yeah, you can see my point. They were mainly used as a skirmishing unit or a champion shield or one-on-one -on -one combat shield. So, you can then see the fact that they evolve over time in many forms. And the thing is, even by sometime after the fall of the Roman Empire, they're still being used. However, not as much anymore because uh, the buckler kind of somewhat died off and then at least somewhat started to come back after a time period or something like that and used in major warfare. However, in some other cultures, rather than just in European and Nor North African and uh, part of the Middle Eastern, you could probably also have seen them in other cultures, probably, especially here in the United States and other Native American cultures, such as in South America and North America, that of which would have probably used a buckler of their own, which I am told there are a few. But, yeah. But, as I said, there are different designs, so I might have to go and make it my own video. If you all want me to, uh, leave a comment down below if you want me to, because I think I might want to do that myself. Uh, but, yeah. Anyways, the buckler shield is still probably one of my favorite shields out there because for self-defense it is perfect, for one-on-one -on -one combat it is perfect, and also for an offensive tool, also perfect. So how do I rate this? I have to rate this with a 9 out of 10 
Uh, the reason I have to get it, give it only a 9 uh, instead of a 10 is probably because of the coloration. Because if we know one thing, uh, they would not have actually looked somewhat like this. So, yeah. In fact, so that's the only problem I just see about it. But, uh, still though. But another thing, also, Lord of the Bells, uh, you should have actually included a leather strap like this that I put on. Because these do not come with a leather strap for some reason. Uh, but yeah, this actually does actually have a historical look, it has a historical feel to it, and it actually goes perfect with my arms and armor. So, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, why don't we actually just talk about more about this some other time, and if y'all want me to, uh, I can easily do a video for y'all on a review for this beautiful badass, and, or a medieval review on bucklers if you want, but yeah. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below if you want me to talk about anything else. And, uh, as well, I also got the, uh, Christmas armor I was looking for and some other weaponry, so, <laughs> uh, you might want to stay tuned for that. And very soon I will be doing some armor-ups. I have been looking to do some Roman armor-ups, especially. Though, with the cold weather, I think I might need to do something that of which will not probably freeze my ass off. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, guys, like and subscribe. Also, check out our Facebook, so that way you can actually stay tuned for more. And as well, we actually put some very fun content on there as well, if you want to learn anything else. Anyways, guys, this has been Celtic Templar, and I hope to see you all in the next one, and hope to see you all joining the order soon. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.